about, how about science in America? Uh-oh, okay, let's see where this takes us. There's enough older people, older folks in here, old like, old folks, you remember. Raise your hand if you're an old folk, raise your hand. There you go, thank you. You remember the day when we used to dream about tomorrow, don't you? You remember, every week there'd be some article in the newspaper, in the magazine, the city of tomorrow, transportation of tomorrow, the kitchen of tomorrow. Anyone younger than 30 doesn't even know what tomorrow is. They can't even pronounce the word, all right? Sorry for the low res on this picture, but it doesn't matter. That's how we used to think of tomorrow. This, this, this was the future in 1988, right? <laughs> this is drawn in the 1950s, in 60s, thinking about the uh, 1960s, thinking about the 1980s. Let's take a close look at what's going on in America. I think we have fear of numbers. Maybe it's not fear, maybe it's ignorance of numbers. Okay. Science illiteracy is rampant in our culture. I, I'm not telling. <laughs> I've changed my views 360, if you don't remember what 360 degrees is, it is that, okay? Now, I wonder, maybe the congressperson did do that, exactly. <laughs> maybe they're just trying to fool you, maybe they're trying to make you think they changed their mind, but they did not, okay? I'd have more respect for them lying with correct math. Okay. <laughs> but I'm pretty sure he was telling the truth with math ignorance. Half the schools in the district are below average. You know, this That's kind of what an average sorta is, right? About half below. That's kind of what not exactly, maybe, but pretty much so. <laughs> Technically, that would be, what would that be? The median, technically, but still. What the journalist probably meant to say was half the schools are below standards or below grade level, but they said below average, which meant they were mathematically illiterate. If that were actually true, something would be wrong with the state of mathematics. Here's one, a little more subtle. 80% of airplane crash survivors had studied the locations of the exit doors on takeoff. So you say, well, I'm gonna study where the exit doors are. Because I wanna be in that 80%, that's a good percentage to be in, isn't it? That's good. So, but think about this. Let me just posit a question to you. Suppose 100% of the dead people study the locations of the exit doors on takeoff. You would never know because they're dead, all right? So, so this statistic is basically meaningless to act upon. That's all I'm saying. I'm just saying. This one, you get this a lot. The state lottery is a tax on the poor. We've heard this because poor people spend a disproportionate fraction of their income on state lotteries. So, but really, I don't think of it this way. I think of it as the state lotteries attacks on all those people who never did well in their math class. That's how I think about it. How about buildings? You go into buildings, 80% of all buildings are missing a 13th floor. Seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 14. 15, 16. I feel like going into all these elevators with a Sharpie, crossing off the floor, putting it, and say, that's the 13th floor. You're not fooling anybody. <laughs> this is 21st century America, and we have people afraid of the number 13. And what happens when you get to lobby, and then you go to floors below the lobby? What do they call them? B for basement, SB, sub SB, B. Can I buy a vowel, please? Like, what are you doing there? We have perfectly good nomenclature for going below the lobby level. We have, they're called negative numbers, okay? <laughs> we know how to do this. It is well understood. 
But of course, this is America. There is a place in the world <laughs> that has negative numbers. Oh, it's in Germany, oh my gosh, oh. Oh, by the way, is this a science museum? No, it's a history museum. <laughs> Germany. That's a closer look in case you missed it. <laughs> okay? <laughs> There's also bad physics. All right? Now, this illustration requires an explanation. <laughs> this is an ad for Holiday Inn. Now, admittedly, this is Holiday Inn England rather than Holiday Inn America. But Holiday Inn is an American company. Now, this is an ad for what a new marketing plan where you can have what they're calling bed warmers pre-warm your bed for you before you go to sleep at night. Okay, so now, so the people on either side are the bed warmers. Now, of course, he's looking at her and not him. Just this <laughs> interesting fact there. But this is a thermodynamically pointless exercise <laughs> because the only way you're going to get the body heat from those two people is if they are naked in your bed. <laughs> but for reasons of sanitation, they are not only fully clothed, they are fully insulated. If you're insulated, your heat is not coming out. It stays within all of your clothing, so they are not heating the bed at all. Whoever thought this up never took physics 101. If they did, then these two people would be naked. I got another one. Uh, is there any Bayer, uh, the Bayer Corporation, do they have plants out here? No? Good, okay. This is an ad from Bayer where they are boasting that they send their scientists into the schools to help out. So Bayer employees volunteer in a hands-on inquiry-based program making science make sense to help kids develop a lasting passion for science. You're on, try to get them interested. Now, first of all, they've got a black kid and a woman, like, apparently these are the problem cases that you gotta get interested. Like, how about the white kid with the tattoo who just got off the motorcycle, where is he, okay? But, okay, so these are the problem kids, okay? The woman and the black kid, all right. Let's see what we're trying to get them interested in. Try to get them interested in why lighter things fall faster than heavier things. That's a tough one, huh? <laughs> it's tough because that doesn't happen in this universe. <laughs> yes, they would finally fix the ad. You're on, try to get them interested in why lighter things fall as fast as heavier things. That's the Galilean experiment. But what's clear is that that previous ad was written by somebody. Nobody caught the error. It was typeset. It was, it was laid out. It was printed. It was, no one caught the error. Nobody in the entire chain of command, from the first person who composed it to the copy editor of the magazine ad. So what's clear is that that whole chain of people are the ones who should be in this photo and not these two kids. <laughs> the American Physical Society meets, it's a, sort of my a professional physics organization, and you know, meet, choose a city occasionally. This one time uh, we met in Las Vegas, but this is what happened here. <laughs> Vegas asked them never to return to the city. 